Okay, today I'm going to be working on the front brakes, replacing the front brake pads and the rotor. If you just have to replace your pads, you can watch the same video. Uh, you want to replace the rotor, just watch the whole video. Okay, this is a 2007 to 2011 JK Wrangler. And it's not that hard to do. You could do it yourself, save yourself money. You need a couple little tools and you can do it. All right, you're going to need 13 millimeter. Uh, to take these 13 millimeters, two bolts that hold on the caliper. I already took one out, so it's easy. Okay. Now what you're gonna do, get the screwdriver, and you're gonna move it out. And what you do, you don't want you don't want this to hang. That your brake line, you don't want them to hang down. You know, with pressure on them while you're doing the brakes. What you do, you just hold it up and put it on top. You know, so it doesn't, you know, put tension on the uh, on the hoses. Okay. Now here's your brake pads. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If you're only doing your brake pads, that's what you do. You take these out. A little screwdriver. You pop them out. One and two. They, these are not that bad, they're okay, but the water, the rotors are warped. And the reason they're warped is because, I don't know if the guy, the, the owner, what, whatever. Um, a lot of times you can't blame the mechanics. Sometimes people just don't want, just want to play, pay for new brakes. If you put new, new brakes without the rotors, and the rotors are warped, you know, the new brakes are really not going to do anything. You know, anything better anyway. All right? Now, if you want to replace the, the rotors like I'm doing... Then you have your two 18 millimeter bolts, one up here and one down there to hold the bracket. All right, I already loosened the bottom one. All right, that comes out. And if, you're, if your rotor is stuck, do not ha hit it with a hammer. All right, don't keep banging it with a hammer. You can tap it lightly, but some people hit it with a sledgehammer. There's a bearing in here. There's a race in there and you can mar the surface of the race and you'll have a hum and you, it'll be worse than replacing your brakes. You'll be giving yourself more work, okay? And then your rotor comes right off. It's hard to see, you know, but they, they are warped. And I do not recommend cutting them. These rotors, they're cheap. You can get them, you can get them on, uh, on online. Maybe the whole set for $150, you know. And you can see this one has a lot of stress, stress marks on it and bluing. And it doesn't pay to cut these anymore because if it warped the first time and you cut it, you're making it thinner. It's going to warp faster. It doesn't make any sense. All right. And then, once you got that off, you want to do a little bit of visual inspection, make sure nothing looks funny. Um, if, if you have a damaged stud, watch my other video and it sh I'll show you how to remove, how to replace those. Okay. And what you want to do with this. You want to make sure that it's clean. You want to make sure that there's no rust on this surface. This one actually has a little bit of a lip, which is nice. You just scrape this all the way around, all right? This whole surface where the, where the rotor goes, this part of the rotor, you, don't, you want this nice and flat against here. You don't want like a little clump of rust here when you put the rotor on it to be cocked to the side. So you want to make sure this is all clean, really nice. Right, you sand it down here a little bit, nice and clean, blow everything off, put a little grease in this area right here, like the little, the little beveled lip over here, make it nice and smooth. Put grease on your, uh, on your uh, studs, make sure that's nice and clean, and you put your new rotor on. Okay, and after you do that, then we're gonna take care of the, uh, the, cal the caliber bracket. Okay, now, what you want to make sure is these pins, where the caliper slides on, when you press the brakes, it, it, it compresses and then it releases so you don't, your brakes don't bind. You got to make sure that these are not stuck. All right, these are nice. I don't even have to touch them, but you can take them out and put new grease in them. But if these are stuck and they don't move at all, you have to take them apart. Sometimes you can't. They've rusted so bad, they're like welded in. You would have to get a new, a new caliper bracket or a new caliper. All right, but if they're a little bit hard, you could take them out, 
the WD-40 and lightly sand them, get them really good until they're like nice and smooth. That's very important because if you, if this is stuck and it doesn't move and you hit your brakes, it's not going to apply enough pressure and the, the vehicle is going to pull or it's, it's just going to bind. It's just not a good idea. You have to, you have to um, fix that. Okay, then you have your little sliders that the brakes slide on. All right, this is cast iron and these are metal, so they're replaceable. You just take them all out. They come with the, they come with the brake pads. And that's one there. Two. Three. And then underneath them, you want to make sure that this surface is nice and clean. You don't want to have any buildup of rust because it's going to, it's going to uh, shorten the distance of the brakes. And sometimes when you have everything installed, it'll be really hard to put it in there. So you want to make sure that there's nothing corroded underneath on all four sides. Okay? And then you put your clips in. These type of clips, the little fat clip goes on the outside. So basically, it hangs over the inside edge like that. And then you just push it in. Just like that. Do it again. Hangs out on the edge like that. And you push it in. And what that does, it gives it a nice brand new sliding surface for the new brake pads. Okay, a lot of mechanics skip this. They just clean the old ones up. Because they're under pressure with time. And not everybody, but I'm just saying. Okay, and you put the bottom one, just make sure, like I said, the tabs are out. And basically, once this is in like this, and this one, you see what I'm saying? If there's any kind of corrosion in there, it's going to be hard to get that, to get that in there. Let me show you something. Of course, you do this on the car, but I'm explaining it, so you get an idea. Okay, things come out. It's easier on the car, but you get the idea. It slides in here, and this one slides in here, like that. And you do the same thing on the other side, all right? Okay, then you slide on your brand new rotor, all right? And then you put your bracket on. This is already done. The bracket with 18 millimeters, you torque them down. Okay. Then after that, you put in your, uh, your, your brake pads like I just showed you. Okay. And then you, you, you have to compress the, um, you have to compress the uh, piston. You use, I'll show you. Okay, you have to compress the, the piston until the bottom's out because the, this is this is piston, this uh, clearance is from the old brake pads with that would have worn. You put the new brake pads in, if you don't move the piston, you're not gonna be able to get the caliper over the brakes. So you have to squeeze them back in. You can put a brake, a, a used brake pad there and you squeeze it, wait till it releases, you squeeze it, wait till it relieves the pressure, you keep squeezing until it's flush. Okay, and then you get your, the piston, to, the caliper's already, the piston's all the way in, you slide them on the brakes, and you put your uh, 13 millimeter bolts in, you torque them up, and you're good to go. Make sure there's no binding anywhere. Make sure everything is like it was when you took it off, and you're good to go. All right, another quick tip on the brakes, it's an important one, is uh, after you do the brakes, or you even get the brakes done by a mechanic, and you, and you take the car back, uh, even though they road test them, it's just, good, just a good idea to make sure that the brakes are not binding, you don't smell anything. I'm gonna show you with the check, you know, with the touch. Uh, it's a little, it's a simple thing. 95%, um, 99% of the times you don't have to do anything, but it's just a, a precaution because it happened to me a lot of times in the past on cars. And I thought I'd just, you know, put that tip out there for you guys.